In this video we're going to learn how to extract DNA from a banana. We are going to need three cups, a knife which does not have to be too sharp, a tablespoon and a teaspoon, a pestle, this is optional, you can just use a spoon, a sieve or sifter or strainer with a thin mesh. You can also use a funnel, which you can make by cutting off the top of a plastic bottle. If you have a coffee filter, you can use that, but if you don't, we can use toilet, facial or kitchen tissue. A long, thin, transparent container such as a test tube but if you don't have one, any narrow container would work, but preferably transparent. We're going to need a banana to extract its DNA. It's better if it's ripe. Then we're going to need dishwashing liquid, or just liquid soap. Water, which is better if it's filtered, but no worries, tap water will do fine. Then alcohol, as pure as you can find it. If you can find pure absolute ethanol, that would be best, but sometimes you can only find 70% isopropyl alcohol, which comes tinted sometimes. This will work too. So here is the total of our materials, some of which are optional, and some of which you only need if you don't have the other. In addition, we're going to be using a chopping board and a twig which we just took from outside. These are both very optional. First we're going to chop the banana. Here we'll only be using one half of a banana, but that will depend on how much you want to extract. A full banana should be enough for 5 to 10 samples. Note that we are using a knife here, but the knife doesn't have to be too sharp, and you can always use a spoon instead. Make sure the banana is chopped very, very finely. Next we're going to mash the banana. If you have a pestle, this is the best method. If you don't, a spoon will be fine. Either way, make sure you end up with a very smooth consistency. We will need about one teaspoon of washing up liquid or liquid soap and five tablespoons of water. This is very approximate, so don't worry if you don't get the exact proportions that we're saying here. DNA is trapped well inside the cells of the banana, so we're going to have to break it loose. The soap will help us do this by disassembling the membranes that are made of fats. We then need to mix very well so that we make sure that as much DNA as possible is released from the cells. This works better with a pestle, but it's okay if you only have a spoon. Either way, make sure to take your time, spend a few minutes doing this. If you have a sieve with a very thin mesh, you can use it to filter the mix. The DNA will be dissolved in the water that pours through, so now you know why we added the water in the lysis solution. This will take a few minutes, but after a while you should end up with a crystalline liquid or semi-crystalline, depending on how thin your mesh is. If you use the tissue method, or a proper filter, you will end up with a clearer solution. If you have a test tube, carefully transfer some of the liquid into it. A couple of fingers in height will do. This liquid contains the DNA of the banana dissolved in it, so we want to precipitate it, which means to take it out of solution. For that, we're going to use alcohol. As it pours in, the water that is now dissolving the DNA is going to instead go with the alcohol. So the DNA has no option but to precipitate. And here it is. Can you see that white slime forming in the middle of the alcohol layer? That's banana DNA. It is not pure. It has RNA, it has proteins and other bits and pieces that got dissolved in the water and then precipitated in the ethanol. So we would have to further purify it if we wanted to analyze it. But it's mostly DNA. Now, just for the fun of it, let's try to fish some of it out. Take a stick, 
and then try to swirl it and see if you can get any of the DNA out. Since DNA is such a long molecule, the DNA of one cell gets entangled with the DNA of the other cells, such that it's very easy to pull them out.